human whose name is written in this note shall die. This note will not take effect unless the writer has the person's face in their mind when writing his her name. Therefore, people sharing the same name will not be affected. Death Note For myself, and I imagine for many others, was the introduction to these Japanese death gods. The series depicts the Shinigami as grotesque, apple-loving creatures who take the lives of their victims by writing their names into a notebook. With the power to kill at will with just a pen, a notepad, and some basic details of identity, are these bringers of death evil in nature, and should they be feared? By the way, if you've not watched Death Note, I highly recommend it. It's superb, and I'm not even a lover of anime. Give this video a thumbs up too, while you're at it. Hello, and welcome, or welcome back, to Pantheon Mythology. Hide your driving licenses and passports, people, because today we'll be looking into the Japanese gods of death, the Shinigami. Throughout history, all cultures have devoted significant time to contemplating death. It is therefore unsurprising that people attribute death to supernatural forces. In Western culture, there are figures like Angels of Death and the Grim Reaper who are believed to guide the souls into the afterlife. Similarly, in Japan, the Shinigami is a figure associated with death. However, as is common in Japan, the stories and traditions surrounding the Shinigami are unique and varied. The concept of Shinigami in Japanese mythology is, in fact, relatively recent, having originated only within the past two or three centuries, either the 18th or 19th century, as a result of Western influence. Here's a free Japanese lesson for you. The word Shinigami is actually made from two words, Shi, meaning death, and Kami, meaning god, and in Japanese folklore, there are kami present in more or less everything in the world, each having a spirit that governs it. A kami of the sky, rivers, luck, and death, which are, of course, our good friends, the Shinigami. In comparison to fellow deadly deities of death we find in other pantheons who work alone as a single entity, Shinigami are numerous and are said to work even in pairs at times. Due to this, it's pretty much impossible to put into words how they appear, as, much like as humans, they're all unique and special in their own way. They are invisible to us lowly mortals, though. Unless you have a strong connection to death, or are on the verge. But still, big win for diversity. Not like old predictable Grimm here, donning the same black robe for eternity. Go shopping, mate. I think you look fabulous in pink. Due to the number of them, this may explain the conflicting ideas on the actual role Shinigami play in the role of ending someone's life. Many believe that, much like myself when it comes to hoovering the house, a very hands-off approach is taken. Patiently waiting for the allocated lifespan of their victim to end, whether that's through old age or an accident, before stepping in and politely inviting the newly deceased to the afterlife. Other stories from the 18th century to the present day present them as disturbing evil spirits or demons that influence people to commit suicide. They are often said to whisper suicidal thoughts into people's ears, and double suicides, where one person kills their spouse before killing themselves, were common. Shinigami were also believed to possess individuals and lead them to dangerous places such as mountains or railway tracks where they would meet their death. The most famous Shinigami story of all, however, is perhaps the tale from traditional Japanese folklore about a suicidal man and a death god. As far as I know, there is no official title for this story, so with that in mind, I shall name it the Suicidal Man and the Shinigami. A man, tired of the monotony of everyday life, decided he had had enough and was ready to throw in the towel and end it all. Just as he was about to call it quits, a dark figure appeared before him, introducing himself as a Shinigami, a death god. 
The Shinigami, with a chuckle, informs the man that his time wasn't up, and the afterlife was not yet ready to welcome into its cold, cold hands, while also explaining that life is measured on a candle, and only once the flame burns out does the life. The Shinigami then added that even though it was his job to take people to the afterlife, he actually had no control over who lives and dies. Feeling a bit confused and curious, the man asks, if you can't control who lives and dies, then what's the point of you even existing? The Shinigami, with a grin, replies, Well, I do have some control over how people spend their time on Earth, and I can offer a little financial advice. Have you ever considered pretending to be a doctor who can cure any disease? The Shinigami then went on to explain that by muttering a couple of magic words, a Shinigami can be forced back into the underworld thus lengthening a person's life. The fake doctor-to-be was also informed that this trick would only work if the Shinigami was sitting at the foot of the bed. If it sits at the head of the bed, however, it means that the sick person is doomed and thus cannot be saved. Using this newfound knowledge, the man grows very rich, but one day he is called to a house to perform another miracle cure. Upon entering, he sees that the Shinigami is sitting at the head of the patient's bed, indicating that death is a certainty. Pleading with him, the family beg and offer him substantial sums as money as a reward. Consumed by greed, our so-called doctor decides to take a risk and waits for the Shinigami to doze off before he quickly switches the orientation of the patient's bed, thus saving their life. That's outside the box thinking right there. The Shinigami, not being a total idiot, is obviously unhappy with the trick pulled, and when the man gets home, pays him a visit, criticizing him for his disobedience and outright craftiness. However, Mr. Shinigami changes his tone and suggests that they go out for a drink to celebrate his earnings. The man, eager for a piss up, agrees, and the Shinigami takes him to a building filled with candles, rather than the local boozer. The Shinigami then shows the man his candle, which has nearly burnt out as a result of the deed committed moments earlier. The man is then offered a chance to extend his life by transferring the wick and wax of his candle to another's, but unfortunately for him, he fails in his attempt as he drops his candle and dies. Moral of the story, don't mess with death, and if you do, don't be surprised if you don't get a second chance. Despite being a newish addition to the Japanese pantheon, the Shinigami have become synonymous with death and are now iconic deities, not just in the East, but in the Western world too. I mean, who could forget this beautiful face? And, just like the life of our so-called doctor friend, the candle on this video is about to burn out. But before we go, let us know your thoughts on the Shinigami Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here, and we'd really appreciate a like as it really helps us out. If you've made it this far, why not check out our Shinigami design over at Pantheon Apparel? We feature designs inspired by mythologies from across the world. We're rated excellent on Trustpilot and Ship Worldwide. You'll find a link in the description. Click on the video on the left here to watch a video that YouTube has chosen for you and on the right here is our binge playlist if you want to go on a journey across the pantheons. But most important of all, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.